Greenhouse gases are components of the atmosphere that contribute to the greenhouse effect. Without the greenhouse effect, the Earth would be uninhabitable. In its absence, the mean temperature of the Earth would be about minus 19 Celsius degrees, rather than the present mean temperature of about 15 Celsius degrees. Greenhouse gases come from natural sources and human activity. The concentrations of several greenhouse gases have increased over time. Some of the main sources of greenhouse gases due to human activity include burning of fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, oil, increased traffic and transportation worldwide, structural change in industry worldwide, structural change in agriculture and forestry. The planet's atmosphere contains greenhouse gases. Solar radiation passes through the gases and warms the surface of the Earth. When heat rises from the surface, some of it is able to pass through the gases, but some of it remains in the atmosphere, adding to the overall temperature. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the concentrations of many of the greenhouse gases have increased. The concentration of carbon dioxide has increased by about 100 parts per million by volume, from 280 parts per million to 380 parts per million. The first 50 parts per million increase took place in about 200 years, from the start of the Industrial Revolution to around 1973. The next 50 parts per million increase took place in about 33 years, from 1973 to 2006. This is how per capita greenhouse gas emissions by country for the year 2000 look like. It is clearly seen that the most developed regions, like North America and Australia, emit larger amounts of greenhouse gases. Aside from water vapor near the surface, which has a residence time of days, most greenhouse gases take a very long time to leave the atmosphere. 48% of total carbon dioxide emissions from the first five years of this century remained in the atmosphere, a figure that is increasing as a cause of a weakening carbon sinks. A carbon dioxide sink is a carbon dioxide reservoir that is increasing in size and is the opposite of carbon dioxide source. The main natural sinks are the oceans and plants and other organisms that use photosynthesis to remove carbon from atmosphere by incorporating it into biomass and release oxygen into the atmosphere. This is the projected temperature increase for a range of greenhouse gas stabilization scenarios. The black line in the middle of the shaded area indicates best estimates. The red and the blue lines are likely limits. Therefore, for a greenhouse gas concentration of 700 parts per million, the estimated temperature increase would be 4 Celsius degrees. Depending on the exact amount of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere, average temperatures are predicted to rise by about 4 Celsius degrees by the beginning of the 22nd century. As greenhouse gas emission levels continued to rise around the world, it became increasingly evident that only a firm and binding commitment by developed countries to reduce emissions could send a signal strong enough to convince businesses, communities and individuals to act on climate change. The Kyoto Protocol was adopted in Kyoto, Japan in December 1997. Because it will affect virtually all major sectors of the economy, the Kyoto Protocol is considered to be the most far-reaching agreement on environment and sustainable development ever adopted. However, any treaty not only has to be effective in tackling complicated worldwide problems, it must also be politically acceptable. Most of the world's countries eventually agreed to the protocol, but some nations chose not to ratify it. Following 
ratification by Russia, the Kyoto Protocol entered into force in February 2005. The protocol requires developed countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions below levels specified for each of them in the treaty. These targets must be met within a five-year time frame between 2008 and 2012 and add up to a total cut in greenhouse gas emissions of at least 5% against the baseline of 1990. Based on carbon dioxide emission levels of 2003, the European Union nations must cut emissions by another 7%, Japan by 20% and Canada by 32% in order to fulfill the stipulations of the Climate Protection Agreement. The protocol places a heavier burden on developed nations. This has two main reasons. Firstly, those countries can more easily pay the cost of cutting emissions. Secondly, developed countries have historically contributed more to the problem by emitting larger amounts of greenhouse gases per person than in developing countries. In order to give parties a certain degree of flexibility in meeting their emission reduction targets, the protocol developed three innovative mechanisms, known as emissions trading, joint implementation, and the clean development mechanism. As it makes no difference to the climate where in the world greenhouse gases are reduced, the Kyoto Agreement allows emission reductions from projects in other countries to be counted into equation. The Kyoto Protocol is generally seen as an important first step towards a truly global emission reduction regime that will stabilize greenhouse gas concentration at a level which will avoid dangerous climate change. As a result of the protocol, governments have already put and are continuing to put legislations and policies in place to meet their commitments. A carbon market has been created, and more and more businesses are making the investment decisions needed for a climate-friendly future. The first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol expires in 2012. By then, a new international framework needs to have been negotiated and ratified, framework which can deliver the stringent emission reductions the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change tells us are needed.